Okay. Good morning, everybody, and again, welcome to Austin. We are going to talk this morning a little about first hub redundancy protocol. Uh, first of all, just a little about me. Uh, my name is Mohammad Tayebi. My name is Muhammad Tayebi. I'm living and working here in Austin, Texas as a network consultant. And uh, I'm, I have been working with Microtech products since 2008 or seven, something like that. Besides of that, I'm Microtech certified trainer and Microtech certified academic trainer. I have a certification with the Cisco, um, Microsoft, EMC, VMware, and the Microtech. We are a global consulting firm called Engineer Austin. Uh, we provide IT services, training, consulting, and uh, design, redesign the internet service provider, wireless service provider, and data center. We have a worldwide client, but our primary client area are in the here, Texas, California, New York, Florida, Center of America and North of America. Let's jump into the topic. This is uh, what we will see in this presentation. Actually, what I hope you get out of it. So at the first, we will talk about the, what's the first hub redundancy protocol, what's the, what's the main problem, and how we can solve this problem. Then we review the uh, VRRP, which is a stand for Visual Router Redundant Protocol, and how it's working, how we can configure it, and we almost cover everything about the Visual Router routing Protocol. So, in order to provide uh, redundancy of default gateway to host connected to our network, we often resort to using first hub redundancy protocol. Here we will talk about the virtual router routing protocol because it's the only standardized FHRP protocol which supported by router OS. So uh, before that, let's take a look why we need the first hub redundancy protocols. In this slide we will see and uh, the Next slide, we will see what's the problem. So, in most of network, you usually have a router which connected to the internet, and the host uh, which take a service from that router to connect to internet. So, of course, you can have a more complicated network with the number of things like uh, other switches, like uh, firewalls, other routers, multiple VLAN radio link, access point. But here we want to talk to the, about the uh, gateway and the host connected to it because it's, it's the most simplistic approach to explaining the need for first hub redundancy protocols. Let's assume this router connected to the internet and those clients connect to that router to take a service like a browsing the website and listening to music, watching the video, and so on. Okay. Let's say the router fail. Or we need to do something like a maintenance job on the router, and router has to be restarted. What happened to those clients connected to that router? So it's obvious none of them still has access to the internet. None of them can browse the pages. Uh, that's why we need to have redundant router. That's why we need to have other device to operate instead of the main one. That's why we need to have first hub redundancy and get rid of this point of failure. So let's move on to the two router. Uh, let's say two router connected to the internet and these hosts connected to that uh, two router but the problem here is uh, which one of these routers should give access to the, those hosts connected to it. So so 
So we need to do something to make that decision. Here is the actual need of fair sub redundancy protocol. We can provide multiple solutions for this situation. So maybe uh, use half of the whole uh, uh, client connected to the router one and other half connected to the router two. And, but uh, we just made another problem. So what happened to those clients connected to the router one if router one fails? So, so in that case, we need to do something like uh, um, change the gateway on the host or change some configuration in the DHCP. But um, isn't much nicer if we, the, 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 the host connected to the router one no can connect it to the router too. Wouldn't be better if uh, we have a fail over plan for them. So here's uh, where the first hub redundancy protocol comes to play. In order to do that, we need to define the virtual router which belongs to the a group of actual router. So this client use um, address resolution protocol, ARP, to get destination it wants to reach. And this host responds to every single uh, ARP request to the client. In, in the virtual gateway, uh, gateway, virtual gateway, we have a, a specific MAC address which belongs to that virtual router. So, uh, and that virtual MAC address can uh, respond to every single one of the ARP requests instead of the router one and router two. Maybe we use uh, one virtual router instead of the two router, and maybe we can use both of the router somehow to passing the traffic from inside to outside or on the contrary, from outside to inside. Without hosts are participating in any sort of the routing process or any changes. So here we can see for any reason if we lose router one. Or maybe we need to do something like maintenance job on the router one and router one has to be restarted. Every packet now we're supposed to going through the router one. Now they are supposed to going to through the router two to reach to internet. Like I said, uh, without particip participating in any sort of the routing process or any changes. So we move on to the VRRP. VRRP is the standard protocol using the IP encapsulation 112. And for the multicast address, it has a 224.0018. Uh, we have a priority range which used uh, to choose the master or backup router. And the range is 1 to 255. We have a group range. So that's an instance for uh, how many VRRP we can have. We have a specific MAC address, MAC address and the preemption is active in the router OS by default in the VRRP. And you can see we can support the Authentication header and IPv6. Each VRRP router is associated with the specific MAC address. VRRP automatic assigned MAC address to the VRRP interface based on a standard uh, MAC address by IANA. IANA. So VRRP MAC address starts with the IAN MAC address followed by, uh, which is the 00.005E, followed by the VRRP uh, MAC address block 0001, and followed by the VR virtual router group ID. So in the hexadecimal fo bit order format. So you assume if we have a VR VRRP group ID 100, the last part of the MAC address will be 60. Priority in the VRRP configuration decided which router should be the backup and which router should be the master. By default, the priority is 100. 
in the, all of the microtic equipment like the switches and the routers. So if you do not assign um, any priority for them and left them and leave them with the 100, the higher IP address, IP address make that decision. So the router with the higher IP address here, uh, the 254 is take the master role and the another router take a backup role. So we have uh, this same situation uh, for the, if you set the similar IP address as a priority on the both router. So here the tiebreaker is the higher IP address. Okay, in this slide, we want to talk to the, about the multicast packet, multicast packet, and uh, it shows us a failure to receive the packet from the master router, which is the router one here, in the period of the time, uh, three times, uh, three times of the advertisement timer, uh, caused the router two, the backup, assume, the router one dead. So the VRRP transition to the unsteady state, and uh, they are going to uh, have an election for choose the master router and the backup router again. Backup router only supposed to send the multicast during the election time. Here we will see in the preemption, if the router one fails and router two become master, will router one uh, be master again if it's back? Backup router can preempt the master route if preempt is active, which is active in the VRRP in the router OS. So when preemption is disabled, uh, a higher priority router will only fail over the master role if the existing lower priority router is no longer available on the, na on the network. Disabling the preemption has some advantage and uh, it's usable somehow in the real world. So it can cope better with the situation if the master router restarted to uh, per periodically flap due the unreliable uh, issue. So sometimes we needed to disable the preemption. Sometimes it's uh, very bad because the preemption uh, can conflict with the network convergence. Okay, here uh, what the VRRP operation do. So here you can see if for any reason we need a change in the router one and router two, uh, we, we don't lose the internet for those clients. So here the router one has a more priority than the router two, so it take the master role and the Backup one, which has the priority 200, is the backup. So those packets going to the router one to reach to internet. And you can see the virtual MAC and VRRP group and virtual IP. And the virtual IP is set as a gateway for those clients. So we, if we lose the router one, the master one, the router two uh, take over the master role. So uh, and uh, every client were supposed to going to internet through router one, no, they are supposed to going to internet through the master two. The router two master. Okay, we got the three option in the VRRP security. None is just for the inside of the VLAN. We use the simple for the um, avoiding 
against the accidentally misconfiguration and we use a authentication header for the a stronger protection like a misconfiguration or uh, some attack, not all of them. So it can p protect against uh, some of the attack. We have a two version in the URP which supported by router OS. The version three is uh, support both IPv4 and IPv6 which is the version two is, while the version two is just support the IPv4. So we don't have the, any authentication in version three. Mm. Is there anybody knows why we don't have the any authentication in the version three? Okay, uh, the version three, uh, the, the reason we don't have any authentication in version three, if you have a uh, router with the, same secret word, secret password, uh, it can uh, prevent from the misconfiguration. But uh, you assume somebody comes to our network and put their another router and do the same configuration without the uh, configure anything for the uh, security. So the router is talking to the all of the node in the or network as a, the same MAC address because you assume that he put the same VRIP group ID and the MAC address will be the similar to the what we have in the those router with the security. So it can mess it up with our network and some of the it can take the some of our client depending on the switch configuration. That's why uh, I guess they don't put the, any authentication on the version three. As uh, you already know, there is no ARP in the IPv6. So hosts learn about the router by receiving the advertisement by neighbor discovery uh, protocol in IPv6. Neighbor discovery already has built in the mechanism to determine the unreachable router, but it takes up to the about 38, it takes up to the about 38 second uh, to find out the router uh, is unreachable. So we can uh, do some uh, configuration on an IPv6 parameter to make this time better, but it has a more, it, it, it comes with the more overhead and uh, especially if you have uh, so many clients in your network. So, but in the VRRP, we can find out the uh, unreachable router in less than three seconds. Okay. For the using the VRRP in the IPv6, we need to put the version in the configuration on the tree, and VP, VT protocol should be on the IPv6. IPv6 use link local address to talk to the, um, VRRP use the link local address to talk uh, to, to, for router to talk to each other. And that's it. Okay. This is our lab scenario here. So as you see, we have a host with the gateway 10, 10, 10, 1, and we have a two physical router with the 10, 10, 10, 3 and 10, 10, 10, 254. We set the priority for the master one, 250, and the, for the backup one, 200. The virtual MAC address is the, the last part is 40 because the VRRP group ID is 64, and V or VRRP virtual IP address is 10, 10, 10, 1, which I told you uh, we put it on the gateway on those ho hosts. So for the uh, configuration, we have uh, about three or four steps in each router. So first of all, we need to uh, assign the uh, physical, uh, the IP address on the physical interface of the router. So we put the 10, 10, 
10.253 in the IP addresses, address list, uh, and assign it to the interface LAN. So we go to the interface VRRP menu. Uh, we call it the or VRRP in the router one, virtual on R1. So with the enable R. And uh, here we put the interface on the LAN, virtual group ID on 64, which we have here, the priority 250, and for one second interval, preemption is active by default, and we put the authentication header password, use the version 2 and IPv4, IPv and again, we back to the IP addresses address list and set the virtual IP this time on the virtual on R1 interface, which is or VRRP interface, virtual interface in the router one. This is the common, for common line, we put the IP addresses, add the address in the interface LAN uh, and put the Authentication header authentication in the interface of the VRRP, followed by the password, followed by the priority 250, version 2, and VRID 64. And we continue uh, to put the VRRP virtual IP on the virtual router, virtual on R1. So the same thing happened for the uh, router to configuration. So we put, we go to the IP addresses, put the 254 on the interface, and uh, we call it we are we virtual on the R2, and with the ARP enable, uh, we this time we put the priority 200 because we wanted to put this router be the backup router and authentication header with version 2 and uh, IPv4. Again, we assign the VRRP IP addresses on the VRRP in, uh, virtual interface. And again, this is the, as you can see, the command for all of those uh, steps. OK. Uh, as you see here, we have another tab in the VRRP, which we can put some script over there. Maybe we can do the, some tracking for the interface, or we can do some other script, maybe playing with the priority in the master and backup sometimes. And OK, this is what we have. That's the result. You can see in the router one, which is the, has a flag, R and M, the R is running and M is master. And uh, you can see it's active. And in the router two, we have a backup. So, and you can see the router one, which is the master here, is active and passing the traffic. And this, and this is the test result. So you can see in the middle of the ping, I take out the router one, and the ping switch to the router two. It's happened with the one timeout or two or three timeout, not more, usually. Uh, we elaborate the VRRP, but uh, I think for better side of view, we need to uh, know what's the difference bet between the VRRP and the one of the best first hub redundancy protocol, which, which is the Cisco GLBP, Gateway Load Balancing Protocol. So as you can see, it's VRRP is a standard, and GLBP is the Cisco proprietary. And uh, protocol in the VRRP is the IP encapsulation 112. And uh, in the GLBP, it's used uh, by UDP 3222. 
the group ID in the VRRP, like we reviewed, is the from zero till 255, and in the GLBP, the group ID range is between zero until 1023. We have a different multicast IP address, 224.0.0.18 for the VHR router redundant protocol, and the uh, 224.0.0.102 for the gateway load balancing protocol in the Cisco. VRRP uh, does not have any um, load sharing active active actually built in. So, but GLBP has it. So you can have a, uh, in the GLBP, you can have a group of four router as a gateway. So they can uh, talk to each other and uh, they can load share the internet, whatever, the LAN and everything. Uh, and the, in the VRRP group, we just have a one MAC address for the VRRP MAC address and we use that MAC address for both for ex or more than two router one and router two and uh, but in the GLBP, like I said, we can use the group of four active router and load balancing between them. The advertisement uh, uh, timer sender, uh, sender is just by master in the VRRP and in the GLBP, uh, all of the router in the group sending the advertisement and they can talk to each other all the time. Um, if you remember, I told you that in the VRRP, the backup router just send the multicast uh, packet if uh, it's assumed the master router dead. The default advertisement timer in the VRRP is the one second, and in the uh, gateway load balance protocol is three seconds. But it uh, can be changed. We can change some configuration. The reason the GLBP is better Maybe because it has a built-in load balancing inside of it, and it has a four router in the same time responding to every single one of the requests from the hosts. Okay, we back to preemption. I want to make a point. So. In the preemption, we talk if the router one fails, the router two take, the, take over the master role, and so everything is fine. But if the router one back, uh, if the preemption active, can take over the master again. But uh, we have another problem. You assume if the connection between the router one and internet fail. So in that case, the router one is still sending the multicast packet every second, for example, and the router two uh, assume it's working. So, and every client send the packet to the router one, but router one does not have any internet here. So, like you can see, the connectivity between the router one and internet fails. So every client is still send the, uh, their request to the router one, but the router one does not have any internet to respond to them. In that case, uh, we need to use some script like uh, what I did here. This is my script. Usually I use it for the uh, check the internet. I check the one of the DNS. Here I check just one, 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 one. So, mm, and uh, if it, uh, we put that script in the router one, which is the master, if the 111 cannot reach after 10 seconds, this script is going to be run. So I put the lower priority 150 instead of the 250 uh, in the router one. So if the router one does not have any internet, so the priority on the VRRP interface change from the 250 into the 150. So you can see here, if it's changed to the 150 instead of the 250, the router to take over the master role and can operate. And if it's back, 
So you can see we put again, we set the VRRP priority 250 to take over the master again. VRRP does not load share, like I said, uh, because it's not its purpose. But the purpose of VRRP is having the gateway from the group of the actual gateway. So this is the example. It shows how we can uh, load share the VRRP. It's uh, usable sometime, but uh, you can see here in the we created two different virtual group, and uh, in this case, in the one, the first virtual group, virtual group 100, the router one is the master, and the router two is the backup one. And we did it again for the virtual group 101 with the different, different virtual IP. So we put the uh, priority 200 this time for the router one and priority 250 for the router two. So in that case, they are, uh, can the, the host, which is the gateway is 10, 10, 10, 1 going to the VRRP group 100 at the first reaching to the router one. I mean, if it fails, going to do through the router two. And the host with the gateway 10, 10, 10, 2 at the first using the VRRP group 101 with the different usual IP and going through the router two. In a case, if the router two fails, they are going to the router one. So this is not the built-in load sharing for the VR, VRRP, but uh, sometimes we use that for the VRRP situation we have. Some people use the uh, multiple VRRP group and with the bonding the interface to make it more efficient. And this is what we have. Okay, this is my resource. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>